Hey everyone, Mr. Newman here. Today we're going to learn about graphs of sine and cosine and how they can change. Uh, first thing I want you to do is I want you to look there at sine and cosine. You see I have them labeled right there. And I want you to type, uh, answer this question by typing out things that you notice, either uh, both similarity, similarities and differences between sine and cosine, between the graphs specifically. All right, now that you've got that typed out, I'm going to give you some that I have. The first similarity is that they're both periodic. That means they both repeat. They, um, they uh, look similar uh, over and over as you move to the right. And in fact, they repeat every 2 pi. Notice uh, you can see that they repeat either 2, two pi from the top of the graph or from the middle of the graph to the middle or from the bottom to the bottom. Um, but uh, the, the structure is going to repeat itself. And you see there, cosine, the solid line, repeats every 2 pi, and sine also repeats every 2 pi. They're different, though, because they start at different points. And by start, I mean when x equals 0, they, they are a different location. So for sine, x of, uh, sine of 0 is 0, but for cosine, cosine of 0 is 1, and that's a big difference. Um, however, they also they all both have the same maximum and minimum. The maximum is 1, and the minimum is negative 1 for both of them, even though those maximum and minimums happen at different times. And then another thing I noticed is that uh, they're both steepest in the middle. So if you start at this green point as you drew right there at the very bottom, as you start to go up to that second point, the graph gets steeper and steeper and steeper. And then that's that middle point. After that middle point, as you go to the third highest point, the maximum, the graph gets less steep and less steep as you go. And that's a characteristic that you'll investigate more in calculus. So one comment I want to make is that you will have to graph these by hand without a calculator. And my advice for that is to do the points first and then connect the lines. In fact, the order I would do the points in, I would start off by plotting the first point, uh, for example, for cosine right here in the middle, and then the last point, and then halfway between those, and then halfway between those are going to be your maximum and minimum. But we'll talk more about that and practice more of that in class. Um, so let's talk about the four features of a sine, sine or cosine graph. First of all, there's this thing called the center line. That's the horizontal line between the maximum and the minimum. So if my maximum is at 1 and the minimum is at negative 1 on this graph, the center line is right there along that uh, dashed line, y equals 0. Uh, the amplitude is the vertical distance from the center line to the maximum. And that, on this graph, is uh, going to be 1. That can be from the center line to the maximum, or it could also be the center line to the minimum. Just don't get confused and say from the minimum to the maximum. That actually is twice the amplitude. So, right there, that A, that is amplitude. The period is the horizontal distance. Uh, to repeating. Uh, in other words, how far you go on the right until you're back to where you started, so you're repeating yourself. And that's, uh, you can see that from the from maximum to maximum. Uh, right here is the period, and that is, on this graph, 2 pi. And the phase shift is the horizontal distance to the start. And it, honestly, it depends on whether you're graphing sine or cosine. I'm going to call this graph sine, and so the phase shift of this graph is zero because I haven't shifted it over at all. On the next graph, I'm going to show you a different phase shift, but here it's zero. If this were cosine, then it would be right there. Our phase shift would be pi over 2 because cosine starts when y is equal to 1. All right, let's look at a graph where all those numbers have changed from the standard. This is your standard uh, uh, sine graph without any phase shift and no change to period amplitude or center line. Like I said, as you're plotting, what I would recommend is identifying the period. The period here is 2 pi. I would start with that first point, a phase shift of 0. And so that means I'm going to plot 0, 0. I'm going to plot the next point, 2 pi to the right. And that's, again, on the x-axis because it's, because it's sine. And then halfway between those will be the point also on the x-axis. That's the other time that the sinusoidal graph intersects the x-axis. And then halfway between those are the maximum and then the minimum. And if you plot those five points right there in that order and then connect the dots, you will always be able to graph these. All right, let's look at uh, some, a different graph. So here, the minimum is negative 1 and the maximum is 5. So the center line halfway between those is at 2. So I'm going to graph y equals 2. 
the amplitude is from that center line to the maximum, and that is 3, so the amplitude is 3. The period is, I could graph this from peak to peak. Oh, by the way, that also should be 3 down there the, from the center line to the minimum. That's a, just a double check to make sure I got my center line correct. The, uh, from peak to peak, we have 4 pi is the distance there, so the period is 4 pi. And lastly, the phase shift, you always have to know whether you're graphing sine or cosine because depending on which one you're graphing, that changes the phase shift. In this case, I'm, we're going to say this is sine. And so I know that my graph starts in the middle and goes up. That's where sine, sine starts, whereas cosine starts at the top of the graph. Sine starts in the middle. So I'm going to identify that middle point right there. That's the center line going up. That's, that's where uh, sine starts. So this graph, the phase shift of this, is over to the right 2 pi. So 2 pi is the phase shift. All right, so that's how you identify the four parts of a graph. Let's look now. I, this is going to be a little bit of an exploration. First thing I want you to do is I want you to open up Desmos and type in that equation. Y equals C plus A times sine of B times X minus D. Make all the sliders, and what I want you to do is I want you to figure out which letter, which variable goes with which feature. So you're going to type in this equation to Desmos like that. You're going to click the All button. You can click each slider individually or just click the All button to make all the sliders. And once you do that, you're going to move each of these sliders back and forth and try to figure out, this, for example, this C. When I move this back and forth, which of these does this affect on the graph? Does it affect the center line, the amplitude, the period, or the phase shift? Okay, and you just write the letter next to each of those. Once you figure out all four of them, then I want you to draw and label uh, the gra a graph here, you could just be wherever you end up there on your graph, and, uh, and you're going to come back and share your answers with your group mates. Last thing we need to talk about is the variable that relates to the period. I'm not going to give it away here, but it acts differently than the other variables. For example, if the center line variable is 5, then you know the center line is y equals 5. If the amplitude variable is 2, then you know the amplitude equals 2. But that's not true with the period variable. And so I want you to look at that and see if you can figure out a way to relate those two. One thing you can do is you can make sure you're in radian mode. And you can also change the x-axis if you click on, let's see here, this button right up here. Click on that button. You can change the uh, scale of the x-axis if you type in pi or pi over 2. And you can change the scale of the x-axis so that you can see what's going on with the period in terms of radians, in terms of pi. Okay, So figure out that down there at the bottom. If you get stuck or spend too long, then that is okay. But thank you for watching.